the meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee for Tuesday, October 16th, 2018 is called to order. Kim, would you uh, call the roll, please? Yep. Mr. Anderson? Here. Mr. David? Absent. Mr. Lyman? Here. Mr. Mitchell? Here. Mr. LaSalle? Here. Mr. McElroth? Here. Mr. Tong? Here. Item 2, approval of the minutes of September 18th, 2018. Does anybody have any corrections or additions to those minutes? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passed. <clears throat> Agenda analysis item three. Does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda or change? Mr. Lyman. I had a, a, a report from our National Night Out subcommittee. Okay, uh, let's. Do that as 5C. It will be rather lengthy. <laughs> it's okay. Martin it's will be the agenda, don't worry. Quietly <clears throat> <and> disembark. <laughs> uh, we actually have it on the agenda already. Um, we've been advised by uh, Mr. Lyman, and it's in um, 5A. Okay. So it's already noted in there. Okay. Item 5, new business discussion items. Martin's farewell. Yes. There's no farewell. <laughs> there is a farewell. No. <laughs> Your last day is Friday. So That's the rumor. Um, yes. So we thought we would update you guys and let you know. Uh, yes. Sad to see you go. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I, I heard the city was throwing a party Thursday afternoon for him. Mm -hmm. City is. So I'm not going to be there, but that's you just from I'm not a big fanfare person. So Thursday, 3.30 to 5 in the commission chambers, yes. But the real party Saturday after he leaves? <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with, with a limited invitation. You're right. So, Martin, how many years have you been here? Um, it is just shy, shy of six. So just I started six. Wow. Um, February 4th of 2013. Um, it has been a very enjoyable five and a half years. Um, I will tell you the same thing I've told everyone else. I have very much enjoyed this job. I enjoy the people I work with. I enjoy the community that I work with. We all have opportunities that come our way in the course of our careers. And I'm someone that values two things. And one's I don't like living with regrets. So I put in for this job as a lark. Um, Lisa will tell you, as I've instilled in everyone that I've worked with, is don't sell yourself short. Put in for every opportunity, if for no other reason, than to sit through an interview and get practice at doing interviews. Yep. Um, and the, the second reason is the commute's killing me. <laughs> you guys hear it once a month in here about how bad it's getting. You know, moving from Florida here, I'm part of the problem. I caused it. Um, <laughs> But the opportunity to live in the community that I'm also working for was something that I was very intrigued with. Um, and the final decision maker in my household said I could do it, so I'm doing it. <clears throat> so, but I, I value everything that I've done here, and I thank you all for your time. Um, and I'll say this, because I said before, the best decision I ever made for this city was hiring Lisa. Oh, thank you. And then the worst decision I ever made was encouraging her to put in for Tony's assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, uh, are you taking over? Um, I'm going to be the exact same job. I'm the operations manager for the Public Works Department um, for the city of Wilsonville. So it's a slightly smaller uh, shop. They have their challenges, just like any community. Um, here, a lot of our stuff is a little bit more aged, um, but we fund our programs very well, and we've got an extremely um, capable operations team. You know, I'll put some of our teams up against contractors on a job any day. Um, they've got relatively new infrastructure, but conversely, they don't have the skill sets that I think a lot of our teams have here because they haven't been challenged in that way. So that'll be some of the things I've got to put together there. And one of my first jobs is 
building them a new operations center. So you're all familiar, <laughs> oh my gosh. You're all familiar with that story. <laughs> Same job, six miles closer. Six miles away. I would like to say I'm impressed with the work you've done here that I've seen. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your help with our committee here, Martin. I mean, you've given us great information in enough detail, but understandable. And you've done the same with some of the citizens that have come before us. You've given them good information. No worries. As hard as it may be sometimes, it's the right (laughs) stuff. Thank you. I'll tell you the truth, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, right. So, gentlemen, um, I think we're done with that new item. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. 5A, tap vacancies and update. Kim? Um, so, do you want to talk about This is all I know. We've got right. four applicants so far. Um, four how many positions? Three. There's yeah. three vacancies. Three vacancies. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they are. Do I go ahead. Tell what, let's start with what the vacancies will be, and then you can say who's submitted for the positions. Vacancies. Yeah. Who is up for expiration? Yeah. Do you have that on there? I don't. No. Okay. It's here on the staff report. It's- so Henry McEnroe mm-hmm. um, and Jonathan David are both uh, getting ready to expire in terms of their term. Okay. And then um, Bob Mahoney. Have we both Mahoney, reapplied? I'm sorry? No. Have they both reapplied? Mm-mm. Uh, Just Henry. Henry. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then uh, Bob Mahoney resigned, so there's that vacant seat. Mm-hmm. To date, as of this morning, we have, I believe, four applicants, and mm-hmm. um, Kim will give you their names. Uh, the first is Paul Edgar. The second is Ray Atkinson. Um, Henry is the third person. Anthony Santa Marina Jr. is the fourth. Yeah. So, Lisa, you're probably the most versed on this because I can't recall. It's we, the TAC now interviews the applicants mm-hmm. and determines whether they have the credentials to sit on the committee, mm-hmm. but that's all they forward to the city commission for approval. Yeah, so what we did last year is we ranked them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we sent that on to the city recorder's office for the mayor to make the final determination. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have received word that this year we only need to uh, audio record instead of video record. I know that has been a point of contention with some of the other boards. They don't want it video recorded. So it won't need to be live and it won't need to be uh, um, video. Uh, and then there are all three at large positions this time. So we don't have to fill a specific spot this year. And Katie already looks at their addresses and makes sure they're in city limits. So all of them are qualified to fill the at-large positions. Would you be able to send us their applications in advance Mm -hmm. so we can Mm -hmm. review them before we have the interviews? Yep. Thank you. Also, uh, Katie has been asking if any of the boards and committees want to extend the application deadline to see if there are any other applicants that want to apply. Do you want to extend it? I know of two other boards that do. I've always resisted that. Okay. How, refresh me again, how you advertise this? There's multiple mechanisms. Mm-hmm. So we've used the city's social media accounts, mm-hmm. which are actually pretty diverse. Yeah. Um, there's, I don't believe anything has gone out in the Oregon City News. No. But I think the primary tactic has been the city's social media account and... Um, the website. And the website. Mm-hmm. Would it be who was to contact the Chamber of Commerce as well? So the Chamber of Commerce actually has a seat on the committee. Mm-hmm. That'd be me. Yeah. 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 So they're, they've been advised. Yeah. And, um, I'm just thinking... Not so much in terms of the chamber gets their own person, but mm-hmm. it's another mechanism of getting I the word I think out. they have yeah. Okay, that's all I was asking. Yeah. 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 There, the uh, so chairperson for the chair or for the chamber is on um, the uh, bang list that Katie Riggs keeps yes. for all major city solicitations or events. So they know mm-hmm. they're pretty much kept in the loop of all the major things the city's mm-hmm. doing. And this is typically one of the major things for solicitations for committees that we do annually. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I must say that I resist extensions, but I'd like to hear from the rest of the people. I'm, I'm just one person. 
Well, at this particular point, I think I better bow out just because I'm one of the applicants. <laughs> so, can well, I give you my two cents? Hmm? Can I give you my two cents? Yeah, sure. There's something to be said for uniformity, especially when you're doing solicitations to the general public. Because what tends to happen is somebody will be like, oh, I'm interested in that, and I heard the deadline was two weeks from now. But they've heard for the wrong committee, and then they don't find out that you chose not to extend, that you kept the original deadline, and then you've got somebody who might have been potentially interested who'll wind up missing out because two of the four solicitations that we're doing for committees now have decided to extend. How so long are they some extending some merit to it. What's that? How long are they extending for? I don't know yet. I just heard word today that they want to extend, so I would have to ask Katie Riggs for how long. I can tell you, though, that we have had people apply after the deadline, and we have always accepted their application and interviewed them anyway. So hmm. might be a moot point. I don't know. I would be inclined to make our committee's deadline equal with the rest of the committees for the reasons that Mark okay. brought up. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Better to be consistent. Yeah. And then should the other committee say, you know, we're not going to extend, then you, your decision is if you're going to remain consistent with the majority. The, the, only, the only caveat to that is, mm -hmm. I mean, what happens if, you know, committee whatever says we still don't have enough people we're going to extend it another you know three weeks or whatever you know i would say one extension and then mm -hmm. we're good period well why okay to, to, to ex what's the reason to extend to just be uniform with with the other committees we have four applicants for three positions do we have sufficient applicants i think we need to more than just being uniform with another committee, I think we I think we need to see. Well, why else would we want to extend, or why wouldn't we want to extend? I think just to be uniform is not sufficient. I disagree. Not sufficient. I would feel that way if it was a private company, but it's public. It's it, and in that instance, you need to be as open and as possible, you know, so that you don't get accusations of you're being preferential to this group or that group within the government. So, I mean, I understand your point, but... We don't know why they're extending, so... It may be that they had no one mm -hmm. apply or they had one person and had three openings. There's also a difference between an opening coming up when a term expires and a current vacancy because they have no one in that seat. That person may have moved out of the city or resigned for other reasons. And so they may have three openings or vacancies right now and only one person has applied, so they need to extend it. And well, in my years of observing all these committees, that's exactly the only reason that they have extended the application period is because they did not have enough applicants to fill the positions they have yeah. and in my opinion if a person doesn't have enough responsibility to get an application in on time then i'm sorry but that's too bad so i've always had to make deadlines in my life and my business right. and if i didn't make them i had to live with the consequences so we typically do the interviews in december is what i yes, recall yes correct okay so it's october mm -hmm. you could extend the deadline to your november meeting you have the extension is we'll, we'll extend, but we're not going past November. Revisit the topic in November. When would you typically do the interviews? We do them in December. We do them in December. Okay. So yeah. you're not delaying anything. As I yeah. say, I like to have the packets in a little bit earlier mm -hmm. so you get a chance to review them. I'll, I'll just say I'm, I'm in a little bit of an awkward spot saying this, but I will say it's a, it's a bit awkward to have the deadline before the election because mm -hmm. the number of openings might change and we'll that's, just leave it at that that's another reason that was discussed as well because they thought they might have people that were interested after the election so. well the election's in november right right november 6th november 6th, november 6th. We, s we still won't uh there you will you'll have a tag meeting after the election mm -hmm. yeah it'll be two yeah. weeks after the election there may not be an office, but you'll know who won and lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You'll have to decline. 
<laughs> well, I think I'll just ask for a show of hands, sir. <laughs> Who would I prefer to not extend the deadline? I'm one. Then we extend it. A majority. Okay. I'll notify Katie, the city recorder. Okay, so let's be clear, because you've made a motion. So you're extending the deadline for how long? What would are the date you be over with meeting? the other groups, or are you going to go until November meeting? That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a very necessary service of you. I didn't get a clear answer. I don't, <laughs> well, I don't think it's necessary to have a vote. No, I'm just trying to clarify your motion, because you, you did vote on November November oh, meeting? The November the, meeting? The November meeting of the TAC. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So Kim's got that. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, Moving on. 5B, public works report. So, um, a few things I want to pass on to you. Um, the 20 mile an hour speed zone guidelines that we had developed. Uh, right now, John and Dana are working that through City Commission. There's a few items that they asked us to do some additional legwork on. Um, so we're not ready to implement that at this time. So we're working through that. Reasonably, we think the best time that you'll probably see implementation of the first of the 20 hour, mile an hour zones is when um, the planning department looks to implement its... Um, Action, action items for the promenade to Kanima Trail area. Um, that's probably when you're gonna see the first of the actual implementations. So John and Dana tend to come back to you probably in the next two months or so um, after they've finished working through the issues that City Commission had and give you an update. But wanna just let you know, hasn't floundered and um, we're still moving with the intent to try and implement with that project. Any questions? I had the impression that the city commission was somewhat reluctant to go forward with it. They've, they've got questions that we've got to address for them okay. sufficiently. So that's what we're trying to work through. Okay. Yep. So the next item for you is the vehicle registration fee update. So in your packet is a memorandum, or at least the language from a memorandum, that the um, city manager is prepared to um, send off in support of the county's proposal for a vehicle registration fee and how um, the cities could potentially implement the vehicle registration fee and what they would potentially implement it for. So just a preliminary budget talk for us, we've got some significant shortages on some of the capital improvements for the transportation systems. Um, things that PMF really wasn't intended to try and target that we envision that this registration fee increase could be very helpful for us. So, um, PMF is really restricted to the pavement, and you're supposed to be maintaining whatever within the two edges of the curb. Transport system, transportation system consists of much more than that, and you know that. Um, with sidewalk improvements, alternative mobility standard or, um, opportunities, we try and accomplish as much of that as we can with PMF, but sometimes we don't always hit the mark because we're very limited with the ordinance as to what we can do with those dollars. One of the things we're hoping to do is possibly invest some of these dollars into helping us with some of our, our other transportation deficiencies. So perfect example, a sidewalk infill program, okay? This summer we finished Partlow Road. We constructed a complete corridor now that we've got sidewalk moving from Central Point all the way to South End on Partlow, and we infilled all of that sidewalk. That's very tricky for us to do with PMUF, and we had to bring infusions of other funds to help fund that. Um, with the general tax, or with the vehicle registration fees, is something that we're looking at as an example of what we could potentially do with those funds. Okay? So this is the memo. Feel free to take a look at it at your leisure. Um, overall, I believe the city's supportive of the county trying to implement a vehicle registration fee, and you have an idea now as to what are some of the deficiencies that we could potentially target. That is one example that I'm giving you, but there are several others that John's been eyeballing. Questions? Would it be helpful if the TAC put forth a letter of support? It could, never, it could not hurt. I take a motion. 
So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, I have a Go ahead. Yes. I would like to hear more about what John's concerns are. John's concerns? You, or the you, you, city council. You, for this agenda yeah. item or the previous agenda item? No, this one. You, I thought uh, you just... City, city, you said the city council had some question, unanswered questions, right? No, that was a previous item. The previous agenda item regarding 20 mile an hour speed zone implementations. It's some feasibility questions that they've posed to us, which is really trying to ground truth that. How are you going to roll out new 20 mile an hour speed zones? On, the, on this one, John was looking for other places, at other places to spend the money. Okay. okay. And this sure. one, I gave you one example yeah, yeah, I got as that. to what we could use it for, but there are several other. Uh, project targets that Don's looking at potential use for the funds. Okay. City Martin, Council. Martin, yeah. I, I did hear one question asked, and that was, it sounds like the county's going to go for $30 when legally they can go for 45 40 something And I did hear one opinion expressed, in for a penny, in for a pound. Why not go for the whole thing if you're going to, if it's going to, you know, mm -hmm. why only go part way? I know... I don't think that's that certainly wouldn't be a reason to not support it, but there is a question: why not go all the way, all the way in? Well, I, and, and the information I've read, Clackamas County is way behind on implementing something like this compared to other yeah. areas, and I think it's so of the tri county well, area. Well overdue that we uh, that if Oregon City would get a piece of the pie. Uh -huh. It, you know, it won't hurt any one individual greatly. I guess depending on how many cars you got. <laughs> so, Martin, yes, um, are each of the jurisdictions that are, I'll use the term, supporting this, going to come up with a list of capital projects that will be part of the publicity when this goes out? We've already, we're not required to, but we've begun that task to provide to the city manager to then share with city commission as to what are some of the potential projects that we'd like to, projects or programs, yeah. that we could potentially use these funds to help with. So you're not developing new things, you're just taking from your oh. just existing <laughs> yeah. We're just going to the shelf of unfunded okay. projects and we're saying, <laughs> what would these okay. potentially, um, what, what, what are these projects potentially could be completed with these additional uh, revenue sources? So you brought up a good question. We're not developing new projects. I'll give you a perfect example. We are getting ready to do an update to the five-year PMUF plan. It says these are all the roads we're going to reconstruct and pave um, in the next five-year term. Every time we do that, we say we're going to do X. And that's usually, you know, to give you an example, you know, say half of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. The list of unfunded projects would fit another page and a half of eight and a half by 11 mm -hmm. uh, sheet of paper. So we've got issues and projects that we can pull at any time if the revenue's there. So is there some structure to the county proposal? I haven't read that, so. There, there is, it's actually in the proposal letter here that you can take a look at. They're looking at um, three different um, splittings or scenarios for potentially splitting the funding. Um, I'm not sure as to which of the three scenarios they're advocating for as, as their primary. Um, but it's oh, all number two in here. Yeah. So state managed 60 percent, 40 percent of the cities, modified state formula, 50 percent of the county, and 40 percent of the cities, and a 10 percent set aside for a strategic inv investment fund with expectations. So it's in the second paragraph here. Any further discussion? Yes, yeah. Mike. Um, if you want more information, the Oregon City Business Alliance does a monthly. Uh, luncheon, and the next one is a week from today uh, at the Abernathy Center. And the speaker is Dan Johnson, who's Clackamas County's Director of Transportation and Development, and he's going to speak on this topic. Uh, it's at the Abernathy Center at 11:30, and you have to make your reservation by tomorrow, which you do on the OCBA website. Okay, we have a motion and a second to um, put forward a letter of endorsement for the Clackamas County and Clackamas City's consideration to enact countywide vehicle registration fee. I'll move. Paul? Hmm? 
I'll make the motion. You already did. Oh. Mike uh, made the initial motion and Henry okay. forwarded. Okay, so, so I missed that everybody in, missed that. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, Adams. so for staff, mm -hmm. if Kim, you can work on an initial draft of a letter of support for what the city managers prepare. Lisa can help you with that. Mm -hmm. It'll be Henry's signature as the TAC chairperson with the rest of the committee listed. LaSalle is the signature. I'm sorry. Bob. Look <laughs> <laughs> at Henry. You can call me anything you want to with your last few days. What can I do? Uh, <laughs> my last day. Call you late for six or loud. <laughs> so, um, so that'd be an action item for Kim, and she'll have that for you before the next um, TAC meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so next item is e-bikes, and this is relatively new. Um, something I want to share with you, and uh, Kim's got a web page we're going to kind of put up on the screen. So the Clackamas Community College, my counterpart over at the Community College contacted us. I'm sorry if you've got to turn around to see this. The Community College is interested in trying to um, implement an e-bike program, and they're gauging the level of interest. So. Please don't go out and tell everybody, oh, they're putting in you know, the Nike bikes um, down. They're gauging the level of interest. Metro has some grant opportunities that they're putting out throughout the region, and the community college is wondering, is this something that they would be willing to be the sponsor for, and would the city and the community be supportive of it? So you've all seen the Nike bikes um, down in, in Portland. If you like them, my wife had a lot to do with them. If you don't like them, she had nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, but uh, it's a program that's been, you know, mixed reviews. The support that they will be looking at from the community is, you know, if you've used these, is basically you can borrow a bike, you use it, and leave it wherever you're at when you're done, and then someone comes around and potentially collects it. So as of now, the community college is wondering, would the city be supportive and could they rely on city staff with helping to corral some of these bicycles, okay? Right now, neither John nor I have a stance on it. It's really just a proposal. The community college is putting out feelers, and we thought we'd bring it to you guys and see what your thoughts were. My, my initial knee-jerk reaction is that there's probably going to be a large amount of off-campus use for these <clears throat> bikes in it's probably going to take more than just the city to do a collection of them because the net the students at the college mm -hmm. are from all over the county mm -hmm. and i'm guessing a small percentage of them would be oregon city destinations and that it might be a more scattered type of a usage than what it seems like it would be in Portland, which I'm sure is scattered too, mm -hmm. but there's more area that's Portland than there is Oregon City. I think we should, we should look at it not from the point of view of, of how how do we collect bikes, okay? Mm -hmm. But from the point of view of what is this going to deliver to our community? If, if we find that it, what it's delivering is good, then I think we can overcome any other issue of collection of, if the, if the if what, we, what we're getting out of it is better than what we have to do to collect them, then, it, then it, it's, a, it's a win. Now, I think the operational aspects of it, and I brought that up because that's my realm. Is not so much a question for you. That's something that the city and and public works and code enforcement, whoever gets tasked with it, they'll have to resolve and deal with that. What I think you should be considering, and Ed, you're absolutely right, is um, what is tax involvement with advocating for alternate forms of transportation, and does this help meet that goal for your community? Is this one of the things that you want to be supportive of as addressing some of the transportation needs within your community? 
Why does Clackamas Community College think they need this? And I, and I, I don't, I'm, right, that, I'm, not, I'm not being argumentative about this. But when I went to college, everybody had a bicycle, you know, or we walked. Or did, did, did Metro just pick them because they are? No, nope, Metro didn't pick them. Um, the chem, this went out to the region and the community colleges expressed interest in considering it. And I agree with you, when we went to college, you had your own bike, you had your own car. Now we're well, in much more of a college. I didn't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> I lived at home, so don't forget. Uh, <laughs> but now we're in a much more of a share economy. And the kids that are going to school now, you know, they use Uber for everything, or they rent bikes, or they rent scooters, and these are the kind of um, community as assets that they're relying on. Which are that person who may or may not have any involvement in the Portland program. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Do they have data on bike usage? And what I'm getting at here is my suspicion is in Portland where you have multiple stations like this, you see bicycles go from here mm -hmm. and they're abandoned over here. Where, where are the traffic patterns yeah. away from the community college? I can completely understand getting to and from, but the success of these types of programs is predicated upon where else they go. Yeah, there's destinations that need to be identified. And I, I'm thinking about up here on the top of the hill, because mm -hmm. I really doubt people are going to be bicycling to the bottom of the hill. Well, <laughs> I mean, let me rephrase it. Yeah. They'll bicycle to the bottom. They yeah. won't go the other way. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, agree. Yeah. I bicycled for, for 12 years, and I never rode up the hill. <laughs> I bicycled every day, but I never rode up the hill. I can, t I can tell you from living on Fifth Street that downhill usage is far faster and, and far uh, more d dangerous, I should think, yeah. than uphill. You just can't stop so, on yeah. some of the speeds so that are going this downhill. Point, I mean, are they needing us to say anything? Or? No. This was an informational item for you. And we thought we'd use it as an opportunity to have a discussion so that when it eventually makes its way this way, you guys have thought of some of these ideas. You bring up a very, very good point in regards to destinations. So in Portland, you've got core locations where Nike did a lot of market research and said this would be a good location for here and then created a nexus of these locations so that you could get to one to the other and then theoretically drop your bike off once you get there, get another bike, go to your next location. So that's something that I believe the community college is going to broach this subject. You need to identify, well, what's this web of interconnectivity that you're trying to address? So if you recall, when we were talking about the 20 mile an hour bike zones, or the 20 mile an hour speed zones, we were trying to say, you want 20 mile an hours in this corridor because you're trying to get from this park to this park for pedestrians. It's the very same question that you'd be asking with the e-bikes. You're trying to get from this location to this location with bicycles. But we know the community college is one. Where is the other location? And should there be more than two? Yeah. Like another another one that springs to mind is the Fred Meyer Safeway complex up on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And then another one at downtown. But what's the range of these things? Oh, you can take them as far as you want. They're they're not actually, well, some of them are electric bikes, but they're really, you're just renting the bike. Oh, so sure. Wherever your pedal power will take you. Okay. Yeah. So are they in the middle of researching this? Nope. They're not even there yet. They've asked us what our thoughts were. It literally hit my desk this morning. We thought, let's bring it up attack and just put it out there in the ether and you're aware this is potentially coming. Who would be Did doing they, the research? It would be the community college. And I'd be willing to wait until to see what they yeah. find out. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would there be a grant that funds the acquisition? So scroll down a little bit, would you please? So this grant opportunity is through Metro. Community College would be the grant sponsor. Uh, Metro is looking at looking at uh, looking at identifying a few uh, pilot partners and implementing something similar to, but not exactly like the Nike bikes within um, their member areas. And if they select you, do they do that 
nexus uh, analysts? And so the analysis? partner and Metro would have to address all of these questions okay. in terms of what's the connectivity, what's the eventual goal, um, are you trying to provide bikes just to provide bikes, or is this actually a feasible form of alternative transportation? So is this looked at as being uh, part of the, uh, the, the Portland e-bike? Or I mean, no, it's going to be a separate... Now, did, did they mention scooters at all, or are they just talking nope. bicycles? No scooters. Okay. Just bicycles. I, th I think it's worth looking into further a phone because we're going to have more traffic congestion and a lot of that stuff is centered around the college anyway. Well, I think this is my two cents. If this group is going to advocate for alternative forms of transportation, you, need, you don't necessarily have to support it, but you need to hear it out for its merits and base your decision on its merits. Mm -hmm. Would there be in this grant process any possibility of getting money for the TSP biking projects? No. Okay. Yeah, the actual parameters of, of this grant and what they're looking for are very spelled out. So certainly we have a well understood, clearly defined challenge. The hills. <laughs> Yeah, but you can't flatten those out, Henry. No, but you can figure out how to how to make a bicycle program work on them. A guy going uphill, his legs going a million miles an hour. He's going about two miles an hour. <laughs> Chairman, any other questions on this agenda item? I, I make a motion that we we support the college in their their fact finding research. I don't even think they're there yet. They're yet. There yet. Well, we would support them in, in doing yeah. that. Yeah. I'll second it if it's necessary. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I'll send an email to Bob Cochran at the community college letting them know that you guys are aware of it and that you're interested in being kept in the loop. Okay? Quick and simple. The last item, Mr. Lyman. So you, if you recall at our last uh, meeting, uh, the National Night Out was discussed and reviewed the 2018 National Night Out of the, the TAC and their their uh, booth, okay, which was in conjunction with the Public Works, I believe. So our subcommittee of Henry and Bob and I met and uh, we brainstormed and said, well, what do we, uh, what are people interested in knowing and, and what what fits with our scope as transportation advisory uh, committee. And so what we came up with as a, a draft of some display boards is this handout that you have, um, a map. Okay, these would be, a, you know, something perhaps like that map over there on the wall, a map that shows the different neighborhoods in the city then another map that shows the, the, the projects, the, uh, the uh, TSP projects, okay, and they're color-coded in neighborhoods. And then, then um, uh, a list of the, T of the TSP projects that goes down a ways, okay? It doesn't need to have list all of them because there's a cut line on there. And then, and then, an, and then some detailed sheets that talk about each of the different, uh, each of the different projects. And we felt that this, that the TAC itself couldn't support a booth, but we would certainly piggyback on with the public works. So that was that's what we uh, what what we came uh, up with, and I, I recommend that we continue with this concept and and get uh, uh, working to develop uh, the the actual uh, of materials, the deliverables, so that when the next National Night Out comes, we'll be uh, prepared. If the Public Works will uh, have us, allow us to join with them. We felt that there's a lot that Public Works could offer as demonstrations up there at the National Night Out that people and kids would be very interested in some of your equipment, for example.
They yeah. typically don't like us bringing equipment to National Night Out. We've offered that before. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that should be readdressed because <laughs> the, the police department certainly brings a lot of equipment. So most of the equipment that we have is heavy equipment. And yeah. they've asked us not to bring it there for safety and other reasons. Um, I'm not saying you can't do it. You'll, you'll have to revisit the topic. Well, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. The company I work for, the large heating oil company, each year would send some of our employees over to the local grade school mm -hmm. to tutor the first graders. And the company would pay their wages while they were doing that. And usually there was five or six of them a couple hours a week. Then once a year, we'd have all those little first graders from a very poor neighborhood, an extremely poor neighborhood, come over to our shop and we'd show them the office and I'd show them the service department and the installation manager would show them the, the big shop we had and a little incident happened, it was kind of funny because this one little kid was showing the commercial installation manager a great interest in all these sheet metal tools and stuff and all this machinery and stuff. So he told the kid, he said, well, when you grow up, maybe you can come work for me. And the little kid said, <clears throat> Well, by, by the time I grow up, you'll probably be dead. <laughs> and so, it didn't make his day exactly. But I'm telling you, the highlight of that whole day out there was we had a heating oil truck sitting out in the yard with the engine running, and they'd lift those kids up into the seat of that big old truck, and they'd pull this handle, and the air horn would blast like crazy. And I'm telling you, the first time it happened, Every one of those kids jumped a foot and all the teachers dumped about two feet. <clears throat> but I'm telling you, that got the attention and they loved it. It's just something to think about. Also, your, your, uh, many times I've seen in the past, the table of the different pipes that have been all clogged up. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's kind of an eye-opening thing. It's something that I don't care if it's been discouraged or not able to be done in the past. So what? That's the past. We're looking at the future now. Certainly, the certainly we could bring the uh, the grinder up on a trailer and just leave it on the trailer and explain how the grinder works. I mean, there are ways, I think, to be able to make it interesting. Anyway, well, I think that we're public works is decision whether to do that sure. with a, us asking them... Uh, Maybe to, 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 so it draws more interest into our. Yeah, our we're in the baby steps. Yep. So, well, I'm sure you whoever have succeeds have me will give you good input as to what you can bring. Yeah. <laughs> we welcome you to come back next year and see how it turns out. No worries. <laughs> so, Bob, do we need to have a, 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 a vote on? moving forward with this as a concept or do we just move forward well if anybody does anybody have any objections to moving forward it's to the real active neighbor that i have i think as long as you know this concept like you said is basically all we're saying is here's some maps or or display and Please, Public Works, can we put them in your booth that we don't have to man? Well, I think we, we, well, we, we, well, I think we man support, but not we couldn't man a whole whole booth. Yeah, but it's good. We're, what we're thinking about is giving information to people about what potentially happen in transportation issues in their own neighborhood. So they're concentrated to their neighborhood. What they would walk away with is some printed information about the Park Place neighborhood. What's going to happen in the next 10 years? What's already happened? <clears throat> Get their interest. But my point here is all we're asking is that, like you said, is that we can piggyback on public works. So. I mean, as far as that's concerned, I'm fine with this because it's solely dependent on mm -hmm. what Public Works decides or decides not to do. And if City Council says, gee, I think our dollars are better spent not having Public Works at National Night Out, then we have to find some other means of doing so. Yeah. We piggyback with the CIC 
in the last, I think, three years, and it hasn't been very effective for the TAC. We, we would need some support in in uh, in preparing uh, maps or uh, gathering uh, uh, data. If we could have that from Lisa or Kim, that would be helpful. We can. So I think what a prudent approach could be um, sharing the transportation projects that you're facing is good. Throwing out transportation projects from a master plan that's looking, forecasting 10, 20 years into the future at an event like that. I don't know how impactful that's going to be outside of upsetting some people that that plan's already cast in stone and set. Not really going to have a lot of opportunities to sit here and say, well, you know, this is coming to you in the next year. Something that's really going to be impactful and you should be prepared for. Very short term thing. Yeah. And we already prepare. If you were to do it that way, mm -hmm. conceivably, how many little packets or pieces of paper would you have? I'm not sure what your question is. What do you mean? Well, you're talking about if you kept it to, here's this project mm -hmm. within the, and all the projects that are uh, identified are within the next year. Yeah. Oh, it would be a pretty, so we generate this already. You can go to the public works. Actually, you want to try and get there, Lisa? Public Works construction webpage, and we generate a map that we distribute to the community. Every one of you gets it in your mail um, with the Spring Trail News newsletter. Right. It's a comprehensive map that shows you all of the capital projects that we're proposing for the city, as well as any major development projects. It kind of dovetails when that goes out is just a little bit before when the National Night Out is. Um, and you could use that as a discussion point saying well, these are some transportation or other utility projects that are coming your way that you can foresee impacting you within the next 12 months taking a document that says this is a transportation project that says you may or may not be getting sidewalks somewhere in the next 10 to 15 years <laughs> may not be as impactful to an individual i like the scope of keeping it within a year yeah. but i'm also I, my question is so that I understand your way to do this, but mm -hmm. I don't think we want to see where we're having a booth and here's 50 pieces of paper for 50 different projects. So that's what I was trying to get an idea. So the way we've got it compiled, that's why I wanted to bring this up to show you. The way we've got it compiled here, actually, you can just go to um. So you're talking about the map that was in the trail news. Yeah, but could just go to public work or just go to the web page and just type in construction. I'll show you okay. exactly what I'm thinking. Okay. Public works. So no, no. no. If no. you go to the search, just go to the search bar. It's yeah, my, the only way I know this website is through that search bar. All right. So construction. Yep. Construction project, City of Oregon City. So mm -hmm. we've developed this web page that's very interactive. There you go. Takes a few steps to get there. <laughs> Even if you help build it and you don't know exactly where it's at. Um, <laughs> oh, the I'm map's up not loading for some reason. I apologize for that. But basically right here is that map that you saw on a previous page. I think it's because you're using Microsoft Edge. And yeah, Microsoft like Edge it. is horrible. Um, so what we've got here is on this main page when you come in through a semi-decent web browser. Um, <laughs> it brings you up the interactive map and you can literally click on it. It shows you every one of our construction projects that we're working on for that summer. You also see at the top of that in the tabs is a breakdown of all of the projects so you could look at them in a tabular format. What you could do is have that map blown up to an E size. So that's 36 by 48. Perfect. Um, and that map gives you your, your focal point for the conversation. And then you've got other smaller maps that basically represent everything that you have in those different tabs. So Kim, can you click into a couple of those tabs? So here's everything that we're doing for pavement reconstruction that's affecting your community and what that consists of. Here's everything for our in-house paving, which is less invasive, um, but still you know, a really great program. Here's the major capital improvement projects. This you could just do as a little call out for 
All of the big CIPs are going to hit you in the next 12 months. This right here is an entire booth full of information, and we already make it. Right. Just if you don't go to our webpage, you don't know that it's there. If you don't read the trail news, you don't know that it's there. That could be a good right. um, material for you to share at the uh, National Alliance. Yeah. And literally for staff, you're not making any time. You're not making work for us because we already made it. So you're not going to tick off anybody on that side of the house. Yeah. And for you guys and for Public Works, it's a great product to, to share. We've literally, you can set up a laptop with a Wi-Fi connection and show people, oh, well, you don't have to take this information from you here. This is where we have it on our webpage that you can look at at home. That would be really good. All right. And it's a little bit more concrete than... 15-year plan for a bike right. trail that may not happen. Yeah. If you just have a stack of the quarterly newsletters with a tab on that Perfect. page, just Great hand idea. those out too. Great idea. That's why you pay us the big bucks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, and I'll be honest with you, I'm, you guys are a great resource for us for a sounding board. Because we hear the same stories in our head constantly, and that's one of the things that I like about this community is we come out here and we talk about some of these things. And then when the community is upset about something, we deliberately, Lisa, Kim, and I say, come to TAC. Bring it to TAC. We'll hear you out there. And then, in theory, we have some reasonable heads that are not going to be emotionally invested, and they can be heard out. Well, if I was a normal citizen going to a citizen's a neighbor's night out, mm -hmm and was looking at transportation information, future transportation projects, I wouldn't be so interested in what's going on in the rest of the city. What's going on in my backyard? And I think that 12 months out is somewhat limiting. Mm -hmm. Maybe five years to eight years out, projected projects, that would give me some hope that I might have a crosswalk <laughs> at that particular spot on Holcomb Boulevard. Well, here's, here's the issue with that. I'll play devil's advocate. Well, it could give people, okay, they see the project and they see it's, it's in the one to five years, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that could provide some motivation to uh, become involved, to help to perhaps move a project from from below a line to above a line. Mm -hmm. we'll that. Yeah. So here, here's, here's devil's advocate on presenting the TSP in a, an abbreviated format. It's three volumes. It literally occupies about that much <laughs> on my desktop. Mm -hmm. Okay? It covers various chapters of different portions of mobility and it covers various time frames. And then lastly, all of the projects are broken out into likely to be funded and likely to be unfunded. So you'll need to, if you want to approach that, you're going to have to set what are the benchmarks that you are going to present. Are you only going to present the likely to be funded? Okay, or do you really want to get people's hopes up and say, this is a project we've identified, but it's likely to be unfunded? What's your timeline horizon that you're going to present? Because that plan is good for 10 years. We're in year four right now. So how much forecast do you want to provide? And then lastly, how do you intend to condense three volumes of information, break it down for each of the respective communities in this neighborhood, and present that in a format that is expedient enough for the 10 seconds that a kid is coming by to ask you, what have you guys got to share at your booth? It's very simple. Okay. Real easy. I've already done it. All right. You're ahead of the game. Because I don't include that likely to be funded and not likely to be funded because people don't care about that and they don't understand it. So why present them to something that's more complicated than the average person can absorb while they're standing in front of a booth at Neighbors Night Out? So you're going to present them with hundreds of projects, only 10% of which are likely to be constructed? Yeah, tell them that the, show them that the, the, the short term, medium term, long term, what this time period is on that, show them which each project which is projected in their neighborhood, what is projected in the time frame, 
the priority and it gives them something to look at. It gives them a feeling of hope that, hey, at least the city is thinking about us. You know, it might be 10 years out. This is two different camps of thought, okay? What, what you're uh, suggesting is this is the as is, okay? This is what's going to no, happen. What I'm suggesting is this is what will be. Yeah, this, this is, is what will be, be being and, constructed. And, and, and Bob is showing this is what the the can be. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's. No, no, we're Oregon City, we're not can be. <laughs> <laughs> it's two different um, mindsets yeah. of, of what we want to share. So perhaps we need to have more discussion. Yeah, I guess oh, yeah, we've got a my lot feeling of here is that National Night Out, I, I understand what you're saying, Bob. It's not the mechanism for this sort of thing. It's, and, and to use your own logic for whether we extend the, the deadline for the committee members or not, you said, well, I never extend anything because if people don't want to meet deadlines, then that's that. By that same logic, if people don't want to find out what's going on in their community, National Night Out is not the way to shove it in their face. <laughs> National Night Out is supposed to be about, like you said, it's always historically been a police department thing that's sort of morphed into this community thing. So it's a way to just, hey, here's the stuff that's going on. If you want to get deep in the weeds, then as a community member, maybe you need to look at the website. Maybe you need to come to a TAC meeting. Because I don't know about you, but I see a whole lot of empty seats out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Typically, uh, people don't come to TAC unless they have a problem. Yeah. They want to solve. I agree. Yeah. Well, I think we got quite a bit of lead time. Maybe the subcommittee, after hearing this discussion, yeah. to chew on it a little longer and see if you can come up with some parameters that might. You got nine months to work on the it. two things closer together here, the, the two yeah. theories. Yeah. I would like to pursue, though. And of course, John will have to wish he was here, but he'll get this information. I would like to see if we can get public works in conjunction with TAC uh, rather than pairing up with the CIC, which, like yeah. I said, has been very ineffective. Okay. So we'll bring an action item, follow up with John, see if he's interested in um, pairing public works with TAC versus the CIC. I'd make a commitment for you, but I'd be stepping out of my lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't believe you anyway, so. <laughs> I like um, it. Okay, let me just ask a couple questions here. So, I forgot your first name. No. Vance. 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 So, Vance. Vance. So, what, what would you, what would you, your thought of, of what we, uh, how we should go here? Is I, I think the one year, you know, saying, you know, I like what this, model is here that you've okay. got, but I think you say, you know, here we are at this point in time at National Night Out, here's what you have to look forward to in the next six to 12 months or whatever, um, which forgive me, but when exactly is National Night Out again? June? It is August. Uh, August. August. Hot, 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 hot. Yeah. <laughs> John, did you have any? No, I, I think that, uh, just keep wrestling with it and see what feels like it's going to work. And if it doesn't work, we can, might modify it a subsequent year, you know, if we learn that. But I, I think it's parking it with public works makes a lot of sense. The, the, one, the one thing that I would caution against it is we are actually playing with public expectations with all this. And so you want to pay attention to what expectations are uh -huh. being risen. Uh, thinking about the, some of the controversy that was risen and dealt with when we were actively dis discussing the uh, roundabout up at Mount Pleasant. Um, it, we need to keep that in mind because it would be real easy to upset an apple cart. You don't share something you don't want to. Now, the first year that you say, 
it's likely that your sidewalk will be paved in the next year. And it's not. <laughs> and then it's yeah. not. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Who among us is going to be answering the question at the next national night out where that person says, you said my sidewalk was going to be paved. Why yeah. wasn't it? I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to stand there and go, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, but you know, at the same time, we can tell them some things happen faster than what they were even planned to do. So I was years. involved in the charrettes when we had the workshops for the transportation system plan. And this is a room full of planners and engineers that are all very worst, very versed in this document. And here's what happened at that meeting that I think you need to consider if you're considering bringing the, TS, um, the TSP to National and Idaho. You got binders out here, and each station is manned by an individual engineer that's pretty versed on that binder. And people would come up and go, I live here, and I want to I know what you're doing. And you're literally trying to sit there and go, well, let me flip through this, and five minutes later you find the, where they live and what's associated with that location. We basically were relying on indexes and tables in the back of those various volumes and sending people to, well, you've got a sidewalk issue, that's that table over there. You've got a bicycle issue, that's this table over here. You have a <coughs> transportation issue, that's this table over there. How you're going to bridge that scenario in a booth format in the middle of a ball field in August <laughs> is a challenge that I welcome you to take on. I'll be I'll be so, I, I will pass it on to somebody else. <laughs> so I'm just thinking in terms of the format and the audience, I think something that's a little bit more condensed, a little bit more concise and immediate is going to help facilitate an active discussion. Especially so, somebody you tell them, we're going to be building this next year, and they go, well, geez, that's right behind my house. I want to know what's going on. The, the TSP is on the website, right? On the city website? All three volumes. Okay. So, like Vance said, we, we provide the information on the 6 to 12 month stuff, and then we got a eight and a half by 11 sheet of okay. paper with screenshots exactly. of the city website. Here's the step-by-step. -step. If you want to go in the weeds, yep. here's yeah. how you do it right here. Yep. That's, TSP is like trying to have a coffee meeting and discuss the comprehensive plan. <laughs> We're just going to summarize the entire comp plan for you over some coffee and donuts. It's a little too much to grasp in that format. <coughs> All right. Any other items on this? Okay. <clears throat> Item six, communications. Anything? Item seven, future agenda items. Does anybody want to add any future agenda items? Other than the, uh, this ongoing neighbor's night out, I think we probably should have a progress report or something. Oh, I have an agenda item for you. I'm sorry. Actually, two updates that I neglected to include with the public works report. Bob, if I have your permission, can I back up? Yep. Give you? Go ahead. Um, so we're processing uh, uh, two permits right now that you guys should be aware of. One is homecoming, this upcoming Friday, okay? Good. Stay away from the McLaughlin neighborhood and from the high school um, unless you want to park for a little bit. So homecoming parade, same route as always. Um, if you know that route, um, you know, basically starts up at, uh, what's the middle school? Gardner Middle, Gardner middle, middle school. school. Works its way down Lynn, cuts across the Jackson campus um, of the high school. Um, that is Friday night. You can expect the traffic to begin at about 5.30, and then it will cease somewhere sometime shortly after 7. And it's always fun to watch them make the corner at Jackson. Yeah. Um, we've got the paving. If you haven't been down High Street today, paving is 90% done. Actual full road surface from 3rd all the way out to South 2nd is completed. That Actually, was, I was finishing up before I came here. Um, the last and most complicated portion is the intersection of South 2nd Street and High. The 21st and the 22nd, which is next Monday and Tuesday evenings, between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. The note I got said Sunday, and month, Sunday night. So it gives you a window, and it's right now we're looking playing with the weather and the asphalt plants. It's going to be the 21st, the evening of the 21st, and the evening of the 22nd. Um, and uh, it's going to be night work in that intersection. 
It's the nexus of all roads up and down the hill, so the only way we can really tackle it is trying to do it at night. So um, be prepared for that. We anticipate being done with all of the paving work by the end of next week, and then we'll have some minor punch list items and striping that will get done hopefully by the first week of November. And having driven on some of it already, I can say it looks to me like you're getting pretty good work this time. Yeah, we're actually really pleased with the product right now. Uh, last item, Halloween. Um, in the past, you've seen that the Downtown Oregon City Association has kind of sponsored uh, trick-or-treating on Main Street. Um, the department has agreed to help them with some additional traffic control. We're vetting a couple of proposals. At a minimum, you can expect to see the variable message boards on both ends of the corridor telling people, you know, watch for pedestrians, just a little more highlight. At a maximum, I'm proposing to put out temporary stop signs at every one of the intersections that is not four-way stop controlled and turn them into four-way stop controlled. So you have to pay attention to the pedestrians. Um, one of those two proposals will go forward. Which one won't be my decision? That's it. Thank you for your indulgence. Is it too early to tell any traffic impact of the 12th Street signals? Well, it's too early. Um, I thought we were, it probably was. In the contract, we were going to relook at that intersection, but we like to give it what's called a burn in period, let people kind of become accustomed to it. That mean burning tires coming to a stop now. <laughs> to, I'm actually really curious as to how um, winter is going to get by. Oh yeah, with that light there. Yeah, but some trucks that come up there will have it. Yeah, coming up the hill. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be. That's why I always took Washington Street because I never had to stop anywhere. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So I got a trailer behind my truck. Yeah, but you also have a brand new road surface through there, so that should help. Right. Yeah, with, take, with take sheer eyes, it'll take help. Take two thirteen yep. instead. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to add? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you. Hey.